Welcome to Lefty's Guns. Today we're going to look at an affordable and practical SHTF rifle, the VZ-58. When I was searching for an urban combat or SHTF type rifle, I was immediately attracted to the 762 by 39 caliber. I am admittedly more of an AR guy myself than an AK guy. I have several friends who, who use AKs all the time and love them. I, I tend to prefer just the modularity of the AR-15 platform, but the cartridge used by the AK was definitely something worth paying attention to. It's cheap, it's reliable, and you can find it just about anywhere, at least at the time of this video. Um, but when I was using AKs, I realized that, that immediately they, they weren't particularly accurate in, in my experience, and they weren't very comfortable to shoot. The whole design of the AK-47, and then later the AK-74, um, is, is designed and built with very loose open tolerances. It's just designed to work. It's not designed to be the most comfortable rifle. It's not designed to be necessarily very ergonomic or, or even incredibly accurate. It's designed that you can put it out in the field and it's gonna run no matter what you do to it. And that was very attractive for an emergency situation type rifle. Um, and when I looked at the AK, the ergonomics were rough, but especially rough for the lefty. Um, if, you, if you've ever shot an AK-47, you know that the safety is a big lever on the right side of the rifle. If you're a left-handed shooter, it's impossible to use your trigger finger or your trigger hand, really, to actuate that safety. Um, and so something on that side is fine, but the position was all wrong. Um, and, and so I started looking at other options that use that same caliber. Now, of course, I looked at the SKS. I've, I've had an SKS before, and, and they're all over the map. There's some that are surprisingly accurate. There's some that are junk. They're, they're all over the place. Um, but in doing some research, I found something very interesting, and that was the VZ-58. Now, this is actually a VZ-2008, um, which is by Century Arms. And so what it is, is essentially a VZ-58 that has been disassembled and rebuilt in the United States. Um, it comes in from the Czech Republic as parts. Um, that's this, this grip, the, um, the front sight, the trigger, the sights on here, the bolt, all, all that. Um, but to be 922R compliant, it has to have at least four American parts. So it comes in as just a, just a bucket of parts. Um, and then Century Arms rebuilds them with an American-made receiver, um, barrel. I believe this is American-made. And, and I don't, and I think probably the safety. It, the safety looks to be a new part, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. I know for sure that the receiver and the barrel um, which really are the two most important components to any firearm, are American made. Um, and that, again, that's the VZ-2008, which is just kind of the modern remake of the VZ-58. Uh, it was very attractive to me because it used, get the magazine out here, it used that same 762 by 39 cartridge that the AK uses, but internally, 
this is actually more like a Glock pistol than it is like an AK-47 rifle. Um, and you're going to say, how is this like a Glock pistol at all? It's actually striker fired. It's got a very heavy bolt that if you think about it, just like on your Glock or any striker fired pistol, um, it works just like the slide. Um, so it's striker fired instead of actually having a hammer mechanism. And it, it just seems to run incredibly well. And one thing that's interesting with it being striker fired is it's top ejecting. Um, so hopefully you can see it on the video, but that bolt, when that port is open, that is huge. So whenever you shoot it, the round ejects straight out the top and ejects forward. Um, that, that's nice for anybody, but especially for a lefty, when so many rifles, you shoulder it and the round ejects right in your face. Something that ejects up and forward is very beneficial. Um, so I was, I was pretty interested in, in that alone. And then when I started reading reviews, um, because other, other people have done videos on, on this same rifle, and, and maybe I can link to them in the comments or in the info, uh, I started finding out a lot of things that it, it seems to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the AK as far as reliability and accuracy. And I've done a little bit of reliability testing um, now I haven't <laughs> buried this thing in the mud or, or left it in a lake and pulled it out like you'll see some people doing. But for all practical uses in the field, I've, I've let it get real dirty, real dusty, and then cleaned it up r real nice. And whether it's clean or whether it's dirty, it runs the same. It runs great. Um, and so far it's, it's performed incredibly well. Another feature that's very beneficial to, to the lefty shooter is the position of the safety. Now, it's on the same side as the AK, and at first, I had my doubts about that. Um, and then I got to thinking, I have, I'm an AR-15 guy, and I have several ARs that I've intentionally installed an ambidextrous safety. And if you really think about that, where would that be on the AR? Normally, your, a your safety on the AR is on this side, for right-handed shooters, because you can flip it with your thumb. On the ambi safety on an AR, it is now on this side as well. So on the VZ, that is actually an excellent position for the safety. Now it is, compared to an AR, it feels backwards. So fire is up, and then when you flip the switch, that puts it on safe. Um, and that's just kind of interesting, and I don't think that's anything you could possibly change. But the, the point is you can actuate it with with your thumb or with your finger here instead of having a big lever that you have to move that basically blocks this mechanism. Um, so the safety position was interesting from a left-hander standpoint. Uh, another fascinating thing about this rifle is it actually does have a bolt hold open. Um, so on your last round the rifle cycles just like normal but it locks open. On an AK your last round it stays closed. So the only way to know that it's your last round is to hear that sound you never want to hear. A click when you should be hearing a bang. I've heard, I've heard it said that the loudest sounds you'll ever hear are a click when there should be a bang or a bang when there should be a click. Um, so that last round hold open is, is a nice feature. Now let's talk magazines. Something that's really interesting, as I said, it uses the same 7.62 by 39 round as the AK, so you can buy your same Wolf or Tula or whatever whatever ammo that you typically run in any AK. I think this is hollow point Wolf or hollow point WPA, something like that. Um, obviously steel. Steel will run just fine in this thing. It doesn't, doesn't seem to make any difference whatsoever. Um, what is interesting though, it looks like an AK mag, right? It's not. It's got this rib that runs down down the entire length. And and this and it's got this rib, and then you can see where it clicks in right here. Uh, and this helps with the bolt hold open, bolt hold open, excuse me. Um, so on the rifle, hopefully you can see it here, there's actually a channel where it clicks in, and then this little button right here is is how you can manually hold the bolt open. So you pull that back push that down, and that will manually hold the bolt open. 
Now, when you have the magazine in, this ridge is doing that same thing. This ridge is pushing up on that button. So that's, that's what it does. So it is different than an AK mag. Um, I believe that there is a kit that you can get to add this rear rib onto a standard AK-47 mag so that a regular AK mag will run in a VZ-58, but I don't know if it's worth it. So if you are a dedicated AK person and you love shooting AKs and you already have a stockpile of magazines and, and you're not going to change, then this isn't worth it to you. Um, but if you're looking at this rifle for kind of my original reasons, that I was looking for something that's reliable, practical, um, and really affordable, then it's worth doing. Because uh, I stumbled across a neat deal when I was looking for this. It's uh, by Century Arms, as I said, I bought it from Palmetto State Armory, and it came with this battle pack. I don't have them all in here. Um, but this was full, and so it comes with four mags in this pouch that this is the original check made leather pouch. So that's kind of cool just from a, I guess, vintage -y standpoint. Um, so that's neat. It comes with that plus, plus a mag in the box for the rifle. So you immediately come, comes with five magazines, which is definitely a good start. Um, and I bought all that, the rifle, the magazines, the pouch, the sling, and the bayonet. I got it for $3.99 plus shipping, plus my FFL transfer fee. So you're not gonna find any AK uh, for that price. Like a, a Wasser would be the close, a Wasser 10 is kind of your bottom of the line AK, would be the closest thing that would be to that price. And it's still gonna be, by the time you get the magazines, all that, you're still gonna be paying more for a lesser quality rifle going with the AK. Um, Back to quality. This is milled, which is really interesting. Remember how I was saying it was it was made in America, the receiver and the barrel? So when they actually make it, they instead of using stamp steel like they did in 1958, hence the name VZ-58, um, when they kind of redesigned and recreated this rifle, they actually made it out of milled steel. So it's got a lot more rigidity and it's it's a very solid shooting platform. So you're not you're not gonna find an AK with a milled receiver for three ninety nine. I I promise you, you're not gonna find that. So that's just kind of a look at at the differences there in the magazine, um, and kind of how it fits in to the VZ eight fifty eight versus how you know your standard AK mag would fit. I'm sure in this video review, at least at some points, it kind of sounds like I'm dogging on or bashing the AK-47, and I am i am certainly not. Um, I've, I've shot AKs and, and I enjoy them. It's not typically my preferred weapon, but what I'm trying to point out is just a lot of people don't know about the VZ-2008 or VZ-58. Now this is, this is Monarch, but you can get Wolf, Tula, wh whatever you want, but I mean this is under five dollars a box sometimes. Usually I find it for around five. Um, but that's that's pretty darn cheap. It shoots it every bit as reliably as the AK. Um, and I, I just love how lefty friendly this gun is compared to the AK-47. Mostly because of the position of that safety, because of the op open bolt, and then something I didn't mention earlier. I did mention the folding stock, but what's interesting about the folding stock is that it folds up on the right hand side. Now the original reason for this, as far as I know, um, was because it was a paratrooper build. So the, the soldier would actually carry the sling over their back, and so the rifle could be strapped to their front. Um, and if you needed to use it quickly as basically a pistol, that, that was possible. And for a lot of right-handed people, that's kind of annoying trying trying to shoot with the same side as the stock, just in in the way of your trigger hand. Um, so it's just kind of a lucky side effect for the lefty that this is on this side. 
where it doesn't interfere with your shooting hand at all. The magazine release, if you can see it right there, now you push it forward and it's got this little groove cut out for it, or bit out for it, but that's also on the left side. So that that works incredibly well for a left hand. In changing the magazines, there are obviously all kinds of reviews on, on just the methods of how you do this. That's a loaded one. I'm, I'm inside, so I'm just going to use an unloaded one just for, for demonstration purposes. Unloaded. Um, you have to put the front end first, just like on an AK or anything, and then it rocks back and snaps in place. Now for the left-handed shooter, you can just move your trigger hand forward using your thumb and pull it out and that's pretty easy or if you if you like holding onto the pistol grip and and keeping that hand there it's pretty easy to do with the other hand you simply cross your hand around take an overhand grip with your pointer finger you'll just hook that lever and pull it out from there um, so it's it's lefty friendly whichever way you prefer to do it, uh, which which is very nice. So overall, I'm I'm pretty impressed with the VZ 2008. And now the part of the review that everybody tends to get excited about accessories. So many people will accessorize anything. You can you can probably buy tactical chopsticks these days. <laughs> anything anything that has a rail or anywhere to put something on, you know people will do it. So we, we can't complete this review without at least talking about it. Now this rifle, let, let's look at the reason I bought this rifle. A practical, reliable combat solution. So it makes no sense to spend $3.99 on a rifle and then spend hundreds or thousands on accessories for that rifle. So I've left the original stock on. Um, it came it came with this folding stock, which which is really nice. It folds in and it's and it's pretty darn convenient. Like this rifle folds up to nothing. It's it's probably just over the legal limit um, for overall length. But this folding stock is not very comfortable. So instead of buying some aftermarket stock. Um, a lot of people are doing the exact same thing I did here, just wrapping paracord around around the steel. Again, that's just, I believe that's bar stock steel, um, so it's pretty hard and uncomfortable on your cheek, but just wrapping a little bit of cord around it makes, makes a big difference in putting it next to your face without really adding any weight um, to the rifle. So that, that was my extremely low budget accessory right there. Um, and aside from that, this is the original sling that came with it, um, and it's and it's quality cowhide, so it's it's nothing pretty, it's nothing <laughs> tactical, it's it's not a one point sling or anything like that. Um, it's it's the original Czech Republic style sling, which I mean is the same sling you're gonna find on your your Mosin, your AK, and a lot of SKSs, just you know that kind of generic com block sling. Um, and you probably saw me unscrewing that muzzle device earlier. That's in fact the only thing I've added to this rifle. It originally came, I believe this is threaded one in 14, left hand I believe. It's, it's the same as the AK. And that's something when they made this barrel, that's something that they took into account when Century made this barrel. Um, they just went ahead and matched the AK thread pattern on the end. Um, so it originally came with your scooped out uh, AK-47 style muzzle brake. And I noticed when I was shooting this rifle, it probably because there's no weight in the stock and it's a piston driven gun, so it's got a lot of force coming back, it had a fair amount of muzzle flip to it, which unless you can just muscle it down, which doesn't tend to be an accurate solution, um, makes makes you less precise of a shooter. So really, the only thing I wanted to change about this rifle was reducing that muzzle flip. And after browsing around online, 
I found this device. Um, it's by a small company called Bone Steel Armory. Um, and they manufacture a number of products, but this one is specifically for the VZ2008. If you're going to put this on an original 1958, original design VZ58, uh, look into it a little further. I think this thread pattern is different. Um, because this thread pattern is specifically for the, the new manufacturer barrels. Uh, so you might have to find a different muzzle device. But what I really like about it is, as you can see, it's ported on the top, ported on the sides, closed on the bottom. And it's got some weight to it. Like, it's pretty beefy. So between the weight and the gas coming out the top but not the bottom, it actually does quite a bit to hold the muzzle down. Now an interesting side effect I found with this muzzle device is shooting this thing in a range, it seems like it's twice as loud. Now that's probably a very natural effect because instead of the gas going away from you, instead of that shock wave being pushed entirely down range, a lot of the gas is now coming straight back up. Um, so you're feeling it a lot more. Now if you're hearing this rifle from a distance, I'm sure it's not any louder. Um, but to the shooter, especially if you're shooting this in an indoor range, it, it feels pretty darn loud. Um, so that was kind of a natural trade-off, but again, I didn't get this rifle to, to suppress it. I didn't get this rifle to be sneaking around. I got this rifle because it works. It's something that, that I, can, I can put away and hang on to and pick it up when I need it and it's just gonna run perfectly. Um, so something that's a simple solution that reduces recoil, reduces felt recoil really, and, and muzzle rise is, is definitely worth it to do even at the expense of adding a little bit of volume because it all kind of goes back into the philosophy of, of why you are using this rifle. Uh, if y'all are nut and fancy fans, which I, I am a big fan and I've learned so much through his videos, uh, every time he does a review he talks about philosophy of use and, and I'm not going to steal his idea or anything like that, but I think anytime you are looking at purchasing a certain gun um, or any certain piece of gear, look at your philosophy of use and why, why you want to use it and, and that should really determine what you buy and then also how you accessorize it. Because there's a lot of people who, who I've heard them called mall ninjas. They, they just buy every accessory that you can possibly add and stick it on there. And you end up with this real heavy gun that serves no purpose. Every device should have a specific purpose. And that purpose should ultimately go to the purpose of the weapon. As I mentioned earlier, when I ordered this rifle, it, it came with, with the rifle just in a cardboard box, came with all this stuff, came with the magazines, came with the sling, and came with the bayonet. Um, and this kind of defeats my rule of accessories that add purpose to your rifle. I mean, in its original combat use, a, a bayonet makes a lot of sense for a lot of my, my uses. A, a bayonet's probably not going to be super practical. Um, so it's just kind of a novelty that it came with this. Um, in a leather 45 degree sheath, which is kind of neat. Um, but this is the original bayonet. What's interesting is it actually came um, from the factory completely flat. So I, I had to grind the blade myself. I don't have a ton of experience doing that, but I got a decent edge on there. Um, I mean, it's definitely sharp enough for a bayonet. But that's that's really a novelty. Um, the bayonet's made of the same hardened steel, and the handle of it is made of the same material as the stock on the rifle. It's, it's basically a compressed wood product. So this rifle, as I said, was designed in 1958, um, before polymer stocks were really there. So this was a way to get 
some of the some of the features of a polymer stock with with a lot of the strength of a wooden stock. Uh, so it's it's kind of a a pulp wood mixed with a polymer resin. So it's essentially a really heavy duty particle board. Uh, I was reading some forum about it and I, I heard that it was affectionately nicknamed Beaver Barf, which I, I can kind of see how it gets that name. Just looks like chunks of spit up wood chips. Um, and at first when I saw this, it, it weirded me out. It is, cause it is, it's a strange looking material. Uh, I didn't know what to think about this stuff, but after I've kind of got used to it, it's actually pretty comfortable. It's polished and it's slick. It looks like it would be really rough, um, but it's definitely got some sort of polyurethane or some sort of gloss coating on there that that, that makes it pretty smooth and pretty comfortable. Um, one thing I don't like about it is it gets hot. Mostly in this upper handguard. Now, if you know piston-driven rifles, the piston is inside of here. Every time the rifle's fired, it pushes the piston and the gas comes out here. So there's a lot of hot gas right into this handguard. And that hot gas comes out here. Now, is it, is it going to burn your hand when you shoot it? No. Is it, is it going to feel warm to the touch? Eventually. Definitely. Um, so if you are planning on just taking this gun... Um, and you're just going to be shooting it all day at the range, putting hundreds or thousands of rounds through it, wear gloves. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's most of these Russian or Comblock weapons. Um, they're all piston driven. They, is they, they spit a lot of hot gas and, and you'll notice your hands will be dirty from, from the residue. Uh, so just wear gloves. I mean, nothing super fancy, just light work gloves or mechanic gloves or shooting gloves, something, something like that. Um, and that, that's really the only thing I don't like about this stock and this material. Um, but that's just a side effect of, of how the rifle naturally works, but the stock doesn't necessarily aid that. Um, the pistol grip here in the back is pretty short. Like my hands, my hands aren't huge. And at first, I was, I was worried about that being a bit of a weird fit and the grip angle is kind of strange too compared to like I said an AR that's straighter and is maybe angled back a little a little bit more. This has an interesting curve to it almost like a revolver up in here. Um, not quite, not, not quite that drastic of a curve um, but it's surprisingly comfortable. And I find when I shoot this, it, it really does feel more like shooting a pistol that happens to have a stock than it does like I'm shooting some long range rifle or some big heavy AK. If you're interested in learning more about the VZ-58 or VZ-2008, like most of these weapons, there's, there's a forum set up online that, that specifically talks about a lot of accessories and a lot of things you can put on this. Again, I wouldn't recommend loading this down <laughs> with a ton of stuff because it kind of defeats the original purpose for buying this rifle in the first place for a lot of people. Um, it's, it's a great budget rifle that, that's not going to let you down. It's just, it's just going to run all day long. Um, but if, if you want to learn more, there's, there's a lot of reviews on the internet and, and a lot of great information out there. Thank you for tuning into my review on the VZ58 and VZ2008.